All right. <clears throat> bless you, bless you. It is 6 o'clock. I'd like to call this formal commissioner's meeting to order for March the 14th, 2006. Uh, we'll call on Chief Smith to, for us to call to order. All rise. Oh, yes, oh, yes. This Honorable Board of County Commissioners is now in session pursuant to adjournment. God save the state and its Honorable Board of County Commissioners. I would like to call on Commissioner Harper to lead us in the pledge, followed by Commissioner or Chaplain Joe Creek to lead us in the invocation. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It says in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 2-9, but it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Then again in Matthew 6, 20 and 21, it says, But lay up your, for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust will corrupt, nor where thieves will not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your love and your watch care. We thank you for this legislative body and their willingness to serve. We thank you for their military and the sacrifices they've made. And we're going to honor one tonight that made many sacrifices. And we thank him for his service. We thank for our present soldiers that are deployed. We just pray that we'll have a safe return. We pray for our... our United States, as we're going through a struggling time with elections coming up, just lead and guide and direct us that we might select the right one to lead our nation. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, if everybody would please register their attendance, I'd like to call on Ms. Cottrell to roll call. Present, zero, absent. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, at this time we have four proclamations. And I would like to call on retired First Sergeant Lawrence Kuntz to come forward, please, for the designing section of the 101st North Parkway. How are you, Sergeant Kuntz? Good. Glad to have you here. I'd like to read this proclamation for you by the county mayor. <clears throat> Montgomery County Government Proclamation by the County Mayor. Whereas the first, whereas retired First Sergeant E-8 Lawrence Norman Kuntz, United States Army, was born on July 7th of 1934 in Kaiser, West Virginia. He has lived in Montgomery County for over 40 years. And whereas Sergeant Kuntz began his military career in March of 1952 and retired from the Army as a member of the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, on July 31st of 1972, and whereas Sergeant Kuntz retired with over 20 years of total active service with decorations, medals, badges, and commendations such as the Purple Heart, Silver Star with Second Oak Leaf Cluster, Bronze Star Medal with the V Device, the Sixth Oak Leaf Cluster, Army Commendation Medal with Third Oak Leaf Cluster, Good Conduct Medal, with sixth award, valorous unit award, meritorious unit citation, presidential unit citation, national defense service medal with oak leaf cluster, Vietnamese cross of gallantry and palm, Vietnam campaign medal with 60 device, Vietnam service medal with six service stars and four overseas service bars. Wow. <laughs> Whereas, 
as a lasting tribute to one of the most courageous and accomplished and inspirational soldiers to ever call Tennessee home, the Tennessee General Assembly designated a 2.85 mile segment of the extension of Route 374, which is the 101st North Parkway in Montgomery County from such routes intersection with Dotsonville Road to its intersection with Dover Road as the Lawrence and Kuntz Parkway. And whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be given to Sergeant Lawrence Kuntz, who gave so much of himself in service country and this community. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby find it appropriate to give recognition to Sergeant Lawrence N. Coots, whose outstanding determination and courageous actions were in keeping with the highest traditions and military service and citizenship and reflect great credit upon himself and Montgomery County. Ladies and gentlemen, retired First Sergeant Lawrence Norman Coots. People have always been good to me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's my home here, not West Virginia. I come out of the mountains, but Tennessee is my home, and I thank each and every one in Montgomery County because I like it here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hold on. We would also like to give you this commemorative coin of Montgomery County to keep with you at all times to show our pride in you and you can present it any time. And I believe we want to take a picture of the proclamation if you can come in front. And I have the state proclamation too. You want that in there or just one? At this time, I'd like to call Mallory Fundora up front for the Governors, Governors Volunteers State Award for the Youth Volunteer. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. All right. I would like to also read this proclamation for Ms. Fundora as well. <clears throat> Montgomery County Government Proclamation by the County Mayor. Whereas the Governor's Volunteers Star Awards is a statewide recognition program instituted by former Governor Phil Bredesen to honor and publish, publicly recognize one of the youth, one adult volunteer, and one nonprofit organization from each county for their exemplary volunteer service and community. Whereas Mallory Fundora has been awarded the honor as a 2015 Montgomery County Youth winner for her service to the children of Uganda and her mission to provide them a helping hand. And whereas Mallory Fundora began her own organization, Youth Yesu? Yes, yeah. Yesu, to, to pursue her mission in bettering the lives of children in Uganda. Project Yusa provides food, medicine, and education to the children of Uganda and continues to grow. And whereas now five years after its inception, there are 119 children who are attending school throughout the support of Project USA, along with 350 children receiving a nutritious breakfast each weekday before school. And whereas Mallory lives by the motto, you're never too young to make a difference, and challenges her peers to look around and try to make a difference in issues they see around them. And whereas Mallory has traveled to Uganda to see the changes she has helped create and continues to make a difference in many lives, her volunteer spirit and generosity serves as an inspiration to all of us. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, do hereby encourage all citizens to join me in recognizing Mallory Fendoria on her mission and work and volunteer service to make the world a better place to live. Ladies and gentlemen, Mallory Fendoria. Thank you so much.
Mallory, we also would like to give you a coin, commemorative coin, and if we go up front, we'll like to take a picture. I would like to call Mr. David Wessner up front, please, for the Governor's Volunteer Star Award for the Adult Volunteer. Hello, Mr. Wessner. Good. How are you? Good. I would like to read a proclamation for Mr. Wessner. Montgomery County Government, proclamation by the County Mayor. <clears throat> Whereas the Governor's Volunteer Stars Awards is a statewide recognition program instituted by former Governor Phil Bredesen, to honor and publicly recognize one youth and one adult volunteer, a nonprofit organization from each county for their exemplary volunteer service to their community. And whereas David Wesner has been awarded the honor as a 2015 Montgomery County adult winner for his generous, generous volunteer support to several military and faith-based organizations. And whereas David is a native of Clarksville and a Vietnam veteran who always has been active in this community. He serves as a professor at Austin Peay State University and an associate pastor at Faith Outreach Church. And whereas during David's spare time, he has served as a minister for the soldiers at Fort Campbell, taught classes at Safe Harbor, served as chaplain of the Fort Campbell football team, and most recently served as chaplain for the Montgomery County Veterans Treatment Center, Treatment Court. And whereas David has a passion for serving others and helping them become the best that they can be. And whereas David's true spirit of volunteerism and caring for others is an inspiration to us all and his commitment to his fellow citizens and veterans demonstrate his dedication and love for his community. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, do hereby encourage all citizens to join me in recognizing David Westner for his loyalty and dedicated volunteer service to the citizens and the veterans of this community. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Wessner. I'd also like to present you with a commemorative coin as well, Mr. Wessner. Thank you. Thank you for your service, sir. And I believe we want to take a picture up front. Okay, and I would like to call Dr. Toy Dennis with Serenity House Women's Shelter for the Governor's Volunteer Stars Awards Nonprofit Organization. All right. I would like to read the proclamation here. Montgomery County Government Proclamation by the County Mayor, whereas the Governor's Volunteer Stars Awards is a statewide recognition program instituted by former Governor Phil Bredesen to honor and publicly recognize one youth volunteer, one adult volunteer, and a nonprofit organization from each county for their exemplary, exemplary volunteer service to their community. And whereas Serenity House Women's Shelter has been awarded the honor as the 2015 Montgomery County nonprofit winner for its service to the homeless women and children of Clarksville, Montgomery County, Tennessee. And whereas Serenity House Women's Shelter was founded December of 2012 and has impacted over 400 people since its inception and in 2015 alone in assisted 70 families. And whereas Serenity House Women's Shelter provides transitional housing and supportive services to homeless mothers and their children to include rapid rehousing, homeless prevention, community resource referrals, financial assistance, clothing and food assistance, and whereas Serenity House Women's Shelter, under the guidance of its director, Dr. Toy Dennis, continues to change the lives of those mothers and children in need, of, in need in our community. They hold an annual clothing drive, Operation Warm Up, to assist the less fortunate throughout our community. And whereas Dr. Dennis and the Serenity House Women's Shelter continue to make a great impact by providing needed care and support 
with the homeless, for the homeless, mothers and children of Montgomery County. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, do hereby encourage all citizens to join me in recognizing Serenity House Women's Shelter for its dedication and passion to make the difference for the homeless mothers and children of Montgomery County. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Toy Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say it's an honor and pleasure to be here on this evening um, and to stand here before you. Um, I started Serenity House Women's Shelter in December 2012 because God put it upon my heart that it was the right thing to do. Once upon a time, I grew up homeless and my mother, she experienced a lot of um, traumatic things. So I wanted to give back to the community that I live in. I wanted to know if other homeless women and children experienced the same thing that me and my siblings experienced. And I don't look at it as volunteering. I just look at it as doing what God called me to do. So I just want to say thank you. I'd like to give you a commemorative coin. Thank you. And I think we want to take a picture of her. In front of you, you have the minutes of February 8th, 2016. I look for a motion to approve. Motions made by Commissioner Brockman, seconded by Commissioner Sokol. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please cast your vote. Would anybody like to change the vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you tally the votes? We were missing one, I'm sorry. That would be mine. Okay, 20 oh. yeses, zero noes, and one abstention? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't, ineligible. I'm ineligible to vote, so it'd be 20, 20, zero, and zero. 20, zero, zero. I can only vote in order to win a tie. That's correct. <laughs> The minutes are approved. Uh, and we have one zoning resolution on our docket, CZ3-2016, the application of Earl M. Butts from R1 to C5. Is there any discussion? We got a discussion board or we're going by hand? Huh? Commissioner Keene. Okay. Okay. No discussion? Saying none, I assume you're ready to vote. Please cast your votes. Well, okay. Commissioner Keene, you make a motion to approve? I'm sorry. Seconded by Riccone, Commissioner Riccone. All right. Any discussion? Saying none, I assume you're ready to vote. I'll please cast your votes. Does anybody like to change their votes? Ms. Ms. Cottrell, would you tally the votes? We have 20 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstentions. Okay. Thank you. The zoning passes. Uh, now voting on our resolutions. Resolution 6-3-1, a resolution to support the fiscal year 2016 THDA home grant application. A motion to approve. Commissioner Vallejos, motion seconded by Commissioner Tooley. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Please cast your votes. Is there anyone that would like to change the votes? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? We have 20 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstentions. 16 3-1 passes unanimously. 16 3-2. Resolution to accept a donation for the Horseshoe Pits area of Civitan Park, amending the budget and the, of the Parks and Recreation Department relative to that donation. Is there a motion made by Commissioner Baggett, seconded by Commissioner Jennis? Is there any discussion? Commissioner Harper. 
Okay, Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Question, if we can leave up the vote just for a few moments longer so we can actually see it. It kind of flashes really fast after we vote. Wasn't able to see it. <clears throat> just for a... He's working yeah. on it. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. We can do that, right? He's, tr he's working on it. Who's that, Skip? <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, Skip. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Please cast your votes for resolution 16-3-2. Would anyone like to change their votes? Ms. Cottrell, will you tally the votes, please? We have 20 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstentions. Thank you. 16-3-2 passes unanimously. 16-3-3, a resolution amending the budget of Montgomery County Engineering Department. Is there a motion to approve? Commissioner uh, Albert, seconded by Commissioner Riggins. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Gannon. I'd like to make an amendment out of fairness to all the departments that we postpone or table this request until the budget cycle and have it come before the budget committee. Second. As, 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 as a point of order, Commissioner, if you will, tabling is different than postponing. Right. If you'd like. Postpone it until the next meeting. That's one thing. Tabling is a different type motion. Well, table is tabling until the next meeting. Postpone would be for a longer time. But tabling is tabling is a motion that we've dealt with and I've read a lot about over the last month and a half. <laughs> and it's it's not a favored motion. And 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 I'm I'm it's suggested to me in the rules just to make sure that you get a chance to look at all the options of your motion. If you move to table it, it goes to the table as is can come up at this meeting or the next meeting. If you move to postpone it to a definite time, our next meeting, then it'll come back up then as a matter of rule. I'd like to make, <laughs> withdraw that, and I'll just make a motion that we defer until the budget, budget cycle. Defer or postpone, it's defer work. Uh, it, you, you, that's, a motion, that's a motion to postpone indefinitely, which, which would be, a t well, you've got to pick a date. If you want to pick a date in your budget cycle, but you've got to pick a specific date to make it a proper motion. I not know what day that would be on the budget hearings. So, uh, why don't you make a motion based on, on the to be announced date? Yes. Do what? I'd like to defer it until the announced date for the Montgomery County Engineering Department. Budget hearing. I think that's a proper motion. I appreciate your patience with me. Second. Motion's been made, properly seconded by Commissioner Vallejos. Is there any discussion on the amendment only? Commissioner Albert. Ooh. I'd like to encourage the commissioners not to delay this. This is something that's been dragging on that he, that department has needed someone for over a year and we keep giving him projects to do and and you know we we want things to have an oversight well, without his presence there i mean we don't know if we, we're getting our money's worth and i think that's what we all want but for him to be able to do this on a daily basis he needs another person now because even if you approve it tonight we're probably 30 to 60 days out before he can even hire somebody and if you wait to the budget cycle come july it, it's going to be early fall before he can get someone on board so I encourage you to vote for this uh, position. Commissioner Vallejos. Thank, uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I just think um, if it comes upon the time that he needs it and it'll come along um, during the budget cycle, I think that's when everybody should pr uh, present. I think right now, I mean, he's about to wrap up Rich Allen. I think it's, uh, and then, uh, that'll be plenty for him to do. I think it's uh, incumbent upon us to stay with uh, the budget cycle. Let's, let's see what we got. Uh, this will be added dollars to, uh, to an, uh, a budget that uh, we had to increase taxes uh, on last year. So I think we, ought, we need to wait for this, for the budget committee to uh, do a proper assessment. Um, this is not just adding on uh, health care. Uh, it's adding a paycheck. It's just a whole lot of things. And I just think uh, 
it'd be incumbent upon us to, uh, to, uh, to hold up on it and, and vote on this. Commissioner Rudd. I agree with the previous speaker. We should wait until the budget time so we can have a better analysis of this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote on the amendment. Please cast your votes for the amendment. The amendment is to defer the resolution until the budget cycle begins. No. Is announced. Okay. Can you restate your motion one more time, Commissioner Harper? My budget, uh, <laughs> let's start over. My, my amendment was to defer into the budget cycle on the day that the Montgomery County Engineering Department will be presenting okay. to us. Okay, please cast your votes. Would anybody like to, Commissioner Creek? Would anybody like to change the vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? We have 14 yeses, six noes, and zero abstentions. The motion to defer passes. Hmm? There, there was no red on the board. Right, it didn't show the vote. It showed that, yeah, Skip, this one didn't come up. Skip, can you show that vote tally again? It looked like it was all check marks that came up and not the, not the original votes. So can you? It looked like it was the old voting system. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, yes. He's trying to work on it now. He said he's just getting some kinks out right now, and it may not, it may not work during the, uh, the process. So to his benefit, he's attempting to do it. <laughs> if you want to know the votes, can we, do you have the list of who voted which way, Ms. Cottrell? Okay. Is that good? The best we can do for now. And Skip, you're looking to put the other voting chart back up there, right? Because my screen is blank. And I assume that screen's blank, so I guess the names will come up. Okay, so the deferment, so we vote on the, the motion as amended? It's actually, it's actually, it's actually a motion to postpone to be heard at a definite time. Okay. It's not an amendment. Okay. So we would defer 16-3 until the time of the engineering budget comes up. So that was not necessarily an amendment. So we're moving next to 16-3-4, correct? That's correct. Okay. 16-3-4, a resolution to support for enhanced sustainable funding for transportation needs for the state of Tennessee and local communities. Is there a motion to approve? Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Jason Hodges, seconded by Commissioner Gildersleeve. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Please cast your votes. So we're back on that other page. So you don't have the page that we originally had that had everybody's vote? No, we're supposed to have the page where you see it? Okay. Because I know we're supposed to change it to where we see everybody's vote on this screen. And that'll be next month? That resolution will be next month. Okay. Okay. 
Okie dokie. Anybody like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? We have 20 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstentions. Okay, next is resolution 16-3-5, a resolution amending the budget of Montgomery County Juvenile Court for acceptance of grant funds and purchase of software licenses. Motion to approve by Commissioner Riggins, seconded by Commissioner Nichols. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Please, everybody, please cast their votes. Is there anybody that'd like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please dally the votes? We have 19 yeses, zero noes, and one abstention. Resolution 16-3-6, a resolution giving the Director of Parks and Recreation authorization to create rules and regulations for special events in Montgomery County and providing permits for those events. Motion to approve by Commissioner Tooley, seconded by Commissioner Creek. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Harper. I think as we discussed uh, last week, I'd like to make an amendment that we have this resolution go back to the uh, Parks Committee and have them send us an updated resolution. Second. So is that in form of a? My motion is to send it back to the Parks Committee and they will in turn submit an updated resolution. What's the intent there to do with the resolution? What specifics do you want them to come back with? The specifics that we talked about at our last meeting, which were the rules, uh, how we're gonna follow our procedures and that sort of thing. We discussed that at length last week. Right, so you're asking to postpone it or? Can I help? Yes. I think, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you can, you can, again, move to postpone the hearing of this motion or you can move to amend this motion. And from what you're saying, Commissioner, you, you might be saying I move to amend that we pass this resolution, um, uh, we, we move to amend this resolution to say that the Parks and Rec Department is required to deliver specific rules and regulations to this body before the resolution is passed in whole. I think that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the form of the motions all we're struggling with. So what are we doing? His motion to amend is to amend this resolution to require the Parks and Recreation Department to come forward with specific rules and regulations before the passage of this resolution. Okay, amendments been made by Commissioner Harper. Do I see a second? Seconded by Commissioner Sokol. Any discussion on the amendment? Commissioner Harper, you still got the floor since you made the amendment, I guess. You still up there? Commissioner Vallejos. Thank you. Um, I think the intent because we fully support this, uh, uh, Commissioner Albert. I think the intent is simply to bring back a fully working document as we had talked last time. And I think uh, it, it needs to go back to the committee as intended to bring us back a fully working document and, uh, and not piecemeal. It just come, it's ready to go. We pass it, Mr. Albert, because I think he totally needs all our support. But I think, you know, we're only, we're only doing part, uh, part of our duty here. I think bring the whole document together. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dennis. Yes, sir. As uh, I guess the leader of the gang of the Parks Committee uh, and in our Rules Committee, we do not uh, want to circumvent, shall we say, the department head's ability to set and change regulations to amend things as he sees it fit as he works within the county. I guess I would ask that we amend the, um, the amendment or the motion to take out specific that, in other words, we're going to see his general guidance, where he's going to go with it, uh, you know, is, is it overbearing, is it not overbearing, and that we bring back general guidance of what uh, the director is going to have, and that we're just providing oversight in a governance role 
not telling him versus advice I. So I would ask that specific be brought out of there and that a general regulation be put together with the authority of the department head to adjust, you know, as needed as he accommodates the citizens of this county. So you're trying to make an amendment to go along with Commissioner Harper's amendment? Yeah, I don't mind. Commissioner yeah. Harper, do you accept that in your amendment? That's a thought. That's, that's fine. That's fine. So, uh, and what are, and Commissioner Sokol, since you seconded, you, you take that you, as well? I think it leaves clarification as to Commissioner Genesis. Right, that's where I'm going next. Can you clarify, can you clarify what we're amending? Yeah, what I, my concern is if he gives a specific uh, SOP rule regulation that we vote on, then has we, have we removed his latitude to adjust, to change verbiage, to move things around, and he's got to bring it all the way to the commission for approval again, or do we provide a document that gives a general overview of his goals, objectives, and more specific, but not, how do I say, not exactly what's going on? And I'll have to defer to the attorney if we approve a, an, a, a, a regulation, then must we approve any changes to it? Meaning we as a body, as a whole body, or does the committee then oversee that? The original I don't understand I, your amendment. Can you help? Yeah, the, 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 uh, the original resolution uh, called for the Director of Parks and Recreations to create rules and regulations for special events in Montgomery County and circulate those rules and regulations publicly along with providing permits for such events. The first motion to amend amended this to, to read only that the Montgomery County Director of Parks and Recreation for special events in Montgomery County will promulgate rules and regulations for public use along with providing permits. That was the purpose of the amendment, to require the rules up first. Uh, and then presum presumably it would come back up for a vote uh, if I understand what you were saying, sir, respectfully, uh, the, first, the first motion to amend was for him to come up with rules and regulations and you're attempting to ask for a friendly amendment to say they don't have to be too specific, they can be general statements of rules. Correct. His was specific. That's correct. And so my question would be, is there any other department head that's bound by that type of a, has to come to the whole body before they can adjust, and if we did that. I don't think so. I think that generally Parks and Recreation Department has a committee and is bound with general authority to operate Parks and Recreation and can promulgate their own rules. I think that this resolution was originally written because Parks and Rec is going to be developing some specific new rules to do one new act, which was issue permits, which is something Parks and Rec had not done before. But generally, Parks and Rec issues and produces and, and undertakes its own rules all the time in what time parks open and close, who plays there, what they do within budget, and so okay. forth. So there isn't a, a direct oversight that I'm aware of by the commission over the rules that the Parks and Recreation Department would generally have the power to do. The way you what read you that, then I do concur and I'll withdraw because specific isn't there, but that we get a good set of, so of, of rules and guidance of where he wants to go with it so that the whole body understands. Yeah, know. this was rules and regulations for providing permits for special events. Sounds good. Aren't you referring to policies and procedures a little bit too, Mr. Dennis? No, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. So you withdraw their friendly amendment? Yes, are you, does the word specific still remain in your the word specific still stays in mind. Yes. Okay. So there is no amendment to the amendment. <clears throat> Commissioner Harper. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Riggins. I guess they're not wiping off. Okay. Commissioner Riggins. Is there any fees, any cost associated with the permits? To my knowledge, no. Commissioner Albert, would you like to speak on that a little bit? There, there's no fees or anything. And we currently have a online uh, volunteer an event if you want to have an event you go online volunteer to say when where you're going to have it and that's the extent of it all we're going to do is just add you have to notify the parks department sheriff's department any emergency management people 
There is no policies and procedures. You just contact these people and you'll be given the okay to do it. It's that simple. Okay. It, in my opinion, that would be the only time where this body would need to vote on these policies and procedures. Because at this point, with the amendment, we're treating the parks and the parks department differently than any other department that the county has. The, the department head and the associated committee, if there is one, is usually the ones who determine this and make these, uh, uh, these rules and regulations. None of them have to come before us unless it is a change in the fee, unless there's something that I'm wrong on. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only speaking to the fact that I think the center point of this was because there's going to be a permit, which is a new document and a new procedure. But yes, I think that they have their own rulemaking capabilities. Commissioner Sokol. Thank you. As we said last Monday, I prefer to have this go through the Parks and Recreation Committee. The words uh, rules and regulations, that goes far beyond permits. And I prefer to have uh, this document or these rules and regulations uh, oversaw and oversight through that committee than open-ended as it is now. Thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment? Commissioner Riggins. Then that being said, would, would you want to make an amendment that it just goes back to the Parks and Rec Committee and the not this full body for a vote, like all the other departments do? We've, we've got one amendment on the floor. We have one amendment already on the floor. I'll amend that one then. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that. that's my amendment then, that, that <laughs> these rules and regulations only go back to, you know, uh, Jerry Albert as department head would draft them up, get the approval through the Parks and Rec Committee, just as every other department does, and then not have to come back here to this full body. You have to make an amendment to Commissioner Harper's amendment. So you're, you're offering a friendly amendment to his amendment? Yes. And what is your, can you restate your motion, Mr. Harper, your amendment? <laughs> sure. My amendment was to send it back to the Parks Committee and have them have specific rules and regulations for the permit issuance. And your verbiage on your friendly amendment to his is what? And that would also come back before this full body for a vote, correct? Yes. So my only part is the deletion of coming back to this body. If the Parks and Rec Department <laughs> approves it, it's over. Do you accept that as a friendly amendment? Commissioner Harper? No, I don't. No. Okay. Back to discussion on the amendment. Any more discussion? This will be your third time, Mr. Riggins. That's fine. <laughs> then, then I ask that my fellow commissioners vote against this, and if uh, if you wanted to go back before a body, it would go back to the Parks and Rec Committee, just as every other committee does, and uh, not come back before this full body. Thank you. Commissioner Rudd. Call for the question. Question's been called for. Do I have a second? Seconded. All those in favor of ceasing discussion, this would be a vote to cease discussion. And then we'd be voting on the amendment. Do we have the votes there? Please cast your vote to cease discussion. Would anybody like to change your votes? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? Motion passes to cease discussion. Now voting on the amendment. Please cast your votes for the amendment. Has everybody casted a vote? Because I can't see anything on the screen. <laughs> uh, to what? I would say at this point we would do a hand vote. So Ms. Cottrell, do you see anything on your screen? Sure.
We didn't change the time. You were trying to change the time to this way instead of the old way. You changed the time. Why are we making a resolution to change the time when we didn't change the time? We want to go back to the way we originally voted. We, this system is trying to change the time. There's no to change. You're trying to institute change to go to this system. <laughs> ah, we're back up. Are we ready? All right, please vote on the amendment, Commissioner Harper's amendment. Is there anyone that would like to change their votes? Madam, Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? We have seven yeses, 12 noes, and one abstention. The amendment fails. Going back to the original motion, is there any more discussion on the original motion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Would you please cast your votes for Amendment 16-3-6? Would anybody like to change your votes? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the votes? We have 14 yeses, five noes, and one abstention. Mo the resolution passes. 16-3-7. A resolution to contribute $14,293 to the Clarksville Montgomery County Community Action Agency for payment of delinquent taxes. Is there a motion to approve? Commissioner Brockman, is there a second? Seconded by Commissioner Riccone. Any discussion? <coughs> Commissioner Vallejos. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, my fellow commissioners, I have in my hand two uh, two letters that were sent out from the board uh, from the state of Tennessee, the State Board of Equalization. One sent out on June the 6th, uh, 2012, addressing uh, their, uh, uh, their request to, and, and it was denied. Also on here it says they were given 90 days from the date of this letter to appeal the ruling. No appeal was filed. In August 24, uh, 2015, another letter was sent uh, to Ms. Leslie. Uh, and once again, from the State Board of Equalization, 90 days to appeal, no appeal filed. Uh, my fellow commissioners, it's my recommendation that we vote no. Citizens have called all of us, and many of us, we've talked about it. And uh, if our fellow citizens can't get help on paying their property taxes, then it's not this body's responsibility to pay somebody else's taxes, to include a nonprofit that operates over uh, over a $5 million annual budget. So I uh, applaud them for what they do, uh, working with our children and everything, but this is an issue uh, that was a failure on leadership. And so uh, once again, I ask you to vote no. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Brockman. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I, I would like to argue with Tommy Blohos because uh, we have been five years trying to, to find out from the uh, state about tax exemption. We've done everything that they've asked us to do. Uh, you know, and I, I just, you know, we can't, you can't pay these taxes from federal dollars, which is what uh, we have to work with. And uh, I'd like to ask Leslie if, uh, these charges are correct. Ms. Leslie, would you like to come to the podium if you answer? Yes, ma'am. 
The first letter that Community Action Agency received um, was mailed to the former executive director, and I did not receive it until well after the 90 days. And during that time, I was, in, I was working with the state because we were renovating the facility. Um, every, almost every month between 2012 up until recently, there was communication with the state and the local tax assessor's office asking for feedback on what I need to do to get these property taxes exempt. And uh, all the information that I was given, I did. So the charges are incorrect. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. As a matter of fact, uh, I wanted to point out an inaccuracy. Um, I did a great deal of research with our tax assessor's office, and I've got all of the letters and all of the correspondence. There's nothing in the correspondence file from years 2013 and 2014. So I would concur with Commissioner Vallejos. I'd ask you to vote no on this. This is simply not a request that we can honor. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Please cast your votes. Is there anyone that would like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? We have one yes, 19 no's, and zero abstentions. Motion, the risk resolution fails. Resolution 16-3-8, a resolution to retain delinquent tax attorney for the tax year of 2014. Is there a motion to approve? Motion by Commissioner Riggins, seconded by Commissioner Harper. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Please cast your votes for resolution 16-3-8. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? We have 20 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstentions. Thank you. Motion passes. Resolution 16-3-8 passes. Is there any unfinished business? I'm Commissioner Albert. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Unfinished business, resolution 16-2. That, um, that was tabled last meeting to resolution to acquire certain real estate at 4662 Old Ashton City Road, adjacent to the Fredonia School. I'd like to, uh, I don't know if I need to make a motion to have this untabled. There's a motion to remove from the table by Commissioner Albert. Is there a second? There's a second by Commissioner Hodges. Yes, sir. As uh, I recall the same person that's trying to take this off the table at this meeting. At our last meeting, a motion was to, made to take this off the table, and that motion had failed. So in essence, um, this particular resolution is still on the table, and since the motion during the meeting for it failed to bring it off of the table, that's where it lies. So. And that meeting had adjourned already and the failure to bring it off the table, the only way I believe that it can be brought back on the table would be a motion to suspend the rules in order to make a proper motion to bring this off the table. According to Robert's Rules of Orders and my understanding of it, to bring it off the table as long as you meet as, uh, at least quarterly, it has to be brought back up by the next meeting. It can go for one more meeting afterward. I'll call on attorney. I think, I think so. I, believe me, I do my dead level best and I spend a lot of time on it. It's on the table. Motion was made to bring it off the table, which failed. It's, it remains on the table. It, I, I think I actually incorrectly said you would have to bring it up during that next meeting. But because we meet more than quarterly, 
the, I mean, yes, more than quarterly, there's a specific exception to Rogers Roberts rules that says it can come off the table in this meeting. So I think it's on the table. There's a motion to remove it from the table, a second. It's non-debatable and it takes a majority vote to remove it from the table, but that it's on the table, it's alive, and uh, there's a motion to remove it, so I think it's properly made. Okay, can, can you discussion. inform me of where that is in the rules? Sure. <clears throat> it is debatable, I think, through. The motion to take from the table is, is not, I don't believe it's debatable and I don't believe it's amendable. Well, you need to know that before you can move from the table. And to bring it off is a simple majority. Yes. I'll just accept the ruling from the chair and then. I, I think it's 5.1, Commissioner, and I, okay. I just, do want to find it. At the same time, I'll, I'll go with the ruling of the chair, whatever he decides. We'll go non debatable this time. Well, depends on what version you're in of Robert's rules. I'm in this version. I'm in the version that this kind of goes by. All right. <clears throat> My chair tells us the, you know, Robert's rules has multiple versions, and uh, the chair has told me he's going to rule that it is a debatable motion if you want to debate it. Right. And the Robert's Rules of Orders that we go by, which is, I think, the 22nd version, but I'm not sure. It's in the policies and procedures. It says that to move off the table is a debatable motion. Is a debatable motion. <clears throat> but I will go by the attorney because the attorney, our attorney knows far more than I know. It's rule 35 to take from the table. Mr. Commissioner Red, it's rule 35 to take from the table if you want to look at it. As far as being debatable, I wish I could see better. I'm gonna borrow my glasses. <laughs> I, I believe that under Robert's Rules of Order, Revised Fourth Edition, it's not debatable. Okay, so it's not debatable. <clears throat> So motion on the table to remove, there's a motion to remove from the table by Commissioner Albert. It was seconded by Commissioner Hodges, Jason Hodges. Do you have a point of order or, because we're not debatable, it's not a debatable motion, so it needs to be a point a of order. Point of order. Yes, sir. To the parliamentarian, does the motion to take it off the table be required to be asked by the prevailing side? I don't think so. It's a different motion than a, a motion to reconsider. That's a different motion. I would like to say this to, to the body, if I may. This is just a motion to bring that motion back to the body. It's not a motion to approve it. You're not voting to, to approve or reject the resolution. It is tabled. It is a motion to bring it back to the body as it went to the table. And that's what you're voting on in this non-debatable motion. So there's a motion to remove from the table and properly second it. It's non-debatable. Please cast your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? We have 12 yeses. Eight no's and zero abstentions. So this resolution 16-2-1 is removed from the table. Is there any discussion? Do we have to approve the motion again? The, you mean the motion is already approved. The motion, no, no, no. The motion is was in discussion by this body. It had been uh, there had been a motion moving it. It had been seconded. It was in discussion. It was moved to the table. Now it's off the table, so you're back in discussion on the motion. Okay. Commissioner Albert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make an amendment to the motion that were it uh, in uh, one, two, the four, uh, therefore not to exceed $119,000, that it will read $112,770. 
112770 to replace 119. Do I have that? To replace 119 in the final paragraph? Yes, sir. Is there a second? It's in there twice. Okay. So it would be replaced it twice. It's in there twice. Seconded by Commissioner Riggins. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote on the amendment. Please cast your votes. Where'd you go with it? I only see it once. I see it twice. Does anybody like to change their votes? Ms. Cottrell, will you tally the votes? We have 15 yeses, 5 noes, and 0 abstentions. The amendment passes. Voting on, or is there a discussion now on the amendment, on the motion as amended? Commissioner Vallejos. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor uh, Pro Tem. Just talking about this, and the reason we took it off uh, and tabled it was because on the initial purchase of this, one of the things that we said was that we would hold off on doing anything. And that was the word. I mean, I, I didn't echo this. I mean, came from this body and that we would do that. And that's why I voted to do that. But I just think about, you know, uh, several years ago, uh, former uh, commissioner Lady Kendall came to us and asked for help and we did nothing for her, her center, even though she was a fellow commissioner. There's other centers in this community that need help. And I, I think we ought to give, we ought to give uh, help where it needs. And I, I just think right now, just like it, we're doing everything, we got a budget process that's getting ready to happen. And I know there's available dollars. But I just think, I, I think, you know, once again, um, you know, whether we have money or not, if we have money there, it doesn't mean we have to spend it. Um, you know, I think uh, that I, you know, well, I, I, I think this community deserves it. But, you know, once again, there's, there's, other, there's other communities that have been waiting a long time. I mean, you look out there in the community, and uh, I was privileged to be a part of that, that vote and see the opening out there of the Guthrie Center. That was, and they did everything themselves for over 30 years worked hard at it. Many of them people attend my church and I applaud them, you know, and so, and when it did happen, it was a time, but I, I just seem like we're putting this on, on, uh, on express and I think we need to take our time. We've already purchased this, take our time. And I don't think this is a, uh, you know, a thing that we need to do at this time. And I think when we do do it, let's do it right. And, uh, but at this time I'll be, I won't be supporting this. Commissioner Rudd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with the previous speaker. We may be looking at another tax increase, and certainly we had, you know, in our last budget a tax increase, and I would just like to say, ask you to vote against this. Thank you. Commissioner Albert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, the people of these community, they pay taxes just like everybody else in the community. It seemed like we've been all around the county. It's their corner of the county that needs to be supported now. Uh, if, you, if you don't have these things in place, like today or Friday, I think it was, a million dollar federal grant came out for these type communities. So if we don't set ourselves in place to apply for these free money in a grant that we don't have to take it, take it from taxpayers' dollars, then you know we're not in a position to help ourselves and help that community. So I encourage you to support this uh, resolution. Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, question for Commissioner Albert. I think originally we bought the property was 13.88 acres. We paid $160,000 for, and there's a, now a 501c3 that has is in approved. Is that correct? From my understanding, their their paperwork is in order. It's not yet come back. It's it's just a timely process. So. That being said, any grants, we're now able to apply for those grants without the purchase of this additional property. Isn't that also correct? I mean, there's always, you don't have to have the property to apply for grants. 
But the difference in the grant process in the 501c3 and the government, the larger numbers has to be attached to the government agency. They can apply for smaller grants for like amenities that would go inside the building to help replace maybe a playground or whatever. That's the type of grants they can apply for, but nothing of the big numbers that they'll ever be able to because they don't have the collateral to, to support those type of grants. Like the million dollar grant that just come out, that they would not be able to apply for something like that. But doesn't the county own the 13.88 acres now? Yes. Could does it? the county not apply for those grants now? N no. I mean, there's a process that you have to, when you win, you can uh, apply for them. This one that just came out, May 20th is a deadline, but we may not be in position far enough long in, our, in, along in the architectural phase to be eligible. There's some we're just going to start looking at tomorrow uh, to see what the qualifications are for this particular grant. But the other type grants only comes around every two years, or in, and if they're funded. I'm a little confused by it, but let me just state this. I'm the one that asked to table this resolution originally, and the reason I asked to table it is I wanted to make sure we're making a proper decision. Um, I re-emphasize, along with Commissioner Vallejos, that we proceed in a cautious manner, making sure we're making the most of our taxpayers' dollars. I do want us to do some things for Fredonia. I think it's important. They pay taxes along with all the other members of our community. I don't know that Fredonia should be number one in the allocation of resources. I don't know that for sure. I think there are a lot of other uh, portions of our county that, that may beg to differ with that. So that being said, I'd like us to take our time, be cautious, and make sure that we're making a, a best decision that we can, a reasoned decision for the citizens of our county. Thank you. Commissioner Jason Hodges. Yeah, I just want to ask my fellow commissioners to vote yes. Um, you know, Fredonia has been ignored for years, and it's time to do something for them. And, and just keep my ask yourself, would you support this if it was in your district? District, And remember, at some point, you're, you're probably going to need something in your district, and you're going to need the support of, of commissioners. So thank you. Is there any other discussion? Commissioner Brockman. Yes, uh, thank you. <clears throat> I'm still wondering if the county wants to uh, be in the real estate business. There's a house on this property. Do we want to uh, take control of a house that we'll probably not be able to sell because they're going to put a parking lot around it? I'd ask our other commissioners to vote no. Any other discussion? Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. You know, I've, I've said this before. I'll say it again tonight. I'll say it next month. I think that the people of Fredonia have a right to have nice things in their community just like other parts of the county. I understand that they pay taxes just like everyone else. But I also understand that there are, I, I get calls, I get emails, I know you all do, from constituents who say that there are uh, dilapidated buildings in their neighborhoods, in their communities that are falling down. Some of them are dangerous. They think the children may go into them and get hurt. Some of these abandoned buildings in some parts of the county are becoming a haven for drug activity and criminal activity. And I just cannot, in good conscience, when I talk to building codes and I find out that the reason why these buildings that are dilapidated and falling down can't be taken down and cleared to where to make these areas safe is because the money is not there. And I just can't in good conscience say that it's a good idea to spend over $100,000 to build up and, and redo a building somewhere else when there are problems, problem areas in the county that can't be torn down and hauled away because there's no money. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. But everybody please cast their votes. And you're voting as amended.
to decrease everything to 112. Was there anybody that would like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the vote? With 10 yeses, 10 noes, and zero abstentions. You know where I'm going to vote. I don't have to vote. You, if I, I'm going to vote no. You, you, you are, you, you can, a 10 is the only time you can vote. Welcome. <laughs> I vote no. Motion fails 11 to 10 or 10 to 11. Okay, reports. County clerk's report requires approval from the commission. Ms. Cottrell, would you like to read the county? Or you had it in front of you. Do you read the report? Would you like to read the report? Comes Teresa Cottrell, Chief Deputy Clerk, on behalf of Kelly A. Jackson, County Clerk, Montgomery County, Tennessee, and presents the county clerk's report for the month of February 2016. I hereby request that the persons named on the list of new applicants of the Office of Notary Public be elected the oaths of judicial commissioner and the oaths of the deputy county officials be approved as taken. This report shall be spread upon the minutes on the board of commissioners this the 14th day of March 2016. There are no names to be read into the minutes and you received your list of new notary applications last Monday and none of those had personal sureties. I'm looking for a motion to approve the clerk's report. Commissioner Creek, seconded by Commissioner Sokol. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Would you please cast your votes? Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the votes? With 20 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstentions. The motion passes, reports pass. In front of you, you have your reports to be filed, the Adequate Facilities Tax and Permit Revenues Report for February 2016, the Trustees Report, the School Systems Construction and Financial Quarterly Reports, the Montgomery County Soil Conservation District Annual Report, and the Accounts and Budgets Monthly Report. And none of those need a vote to be approved. You had your county mayor nominations last week, which were for the Airport Authority Liaison Committee and the Library Board. I will not read those unless somebody wants them to be read. If not, please cast, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote on the mayor's nominations. You don't vote on them? There's no vote required. And there was nothing from the nomination uh, committee? No, Debbie says you do. Debbie says you do. I was trying. I was trying to do what was right. <laughs> Any discussions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Please cast your votes. The nominations, the mayor's nominations on the airport authority and the... The vote on those? No, just the, the mayor's, the library board and the airport liaison committee is the report I have, unless you have a different one than I have. No, not on the reports file. Do we have to vote? We don't have to vote on the reports file. Is that what you're asking, the reports I file? We did, I, I thought we did three, four, and five, the bottom three. Not Why according to Debbie, we don't. The mayor nominations, we need a motion in a second. Though. I know. We're, we're stepping, taking a step back for the moment. No, we don't need a motion on those. But thank you for bringing that up, just in case. I think they're new for this week. They might have been, not have been on last week's. Thank you. Need a motion to approve the mayor's nominations. Jason Hodges, seconded by Commissioner Tooley. Any discussion? Seeing none, please cast your votes. Anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, will you please tally the vote? We have 18 yeses, zero noes, and two abstentions. Mayor's nominations passes. Announcements. 21st annual 4-H Chili Luncheon will be held on Wednesday, March the 16th from 11 to 1 in the large conference room. Tickets are $5 for a bowl of chili, drink, and dessert. Dine in or carry out. 
Local deliveries will be made in pre-orders by March 15th by calling 648-5725. All proceeds benefit Montgomery County 4-H, so please come out and support our youth and their involvement in the county government. Is there any other announcements from any commissioners that wish to come forward before we adjourn? So I will entertain a motion to adjourn and turn it over to Chief Smith to adjourn us. All rise. Oh, yes, oh, yes. This Honorable Board of County Commissioners now stands adjourned. May God save this state and its Honorable Board of County Commissioners. <laughs>